past the mic in 2019 um, and it is after, well, uh, like most things that I have uh, in my career um, created out of anger and frustration. Uh, actually, really interestingly, um, I was telling my dad I was coming here and I was doing this and uh, I said, you know, have I always been political? Do you think I've always been political? Do you think I've always been interested, interested in this? And his words were, do you know if you've always been political? You've always been angry. So anger absolutely determines a lot of what it is that I do. Um, there's an optimism that something can be done differently that guides what I do because if I didn't have that to hold on to, I mean, I wouldn't get out of bed in the morning. But in 2019, I created Pass the Mind. I have been doing media commentary and media influencing uh, for quite some time now, uh, often on these types of topics, uh, whether that's on TV, radio, or newspapers. Uh, and actually what I found is the systemic inequalities that I'm talking about are of course embedded in media and often emphasised, regurgitated and um, reinforced through media. And I found myself being called upon as the person to call when you realise you have an all-male, all-white panel. And what I found was that I was being called uh, for things that I was not expert in because there was a box that they needed to, to tick. But that is the intersection of racism and sexism at its peak when I get those phone calls to tick a box. I thought maybe it's time for this to become public. So with the um, permission of women of colour in Scotland who are experts in everything from engineering, doctors and teachers, academics, public health experts that are there, it started with 20, it's at 250 now. And we're on the fourth writer's cohort. So what I'm trying to do is do the practical implementation of how does that change, as well as the theoretical work. And we'll talk about some of the research that I'm doing behind that too. Uh, Kimberly Crenshaw, in her 1989 paper on recent sex, was primarily talking about therapy um, and the, the issue of uh, employment tribunals and employment practice, which did not recognise the very specific uh, intersection of being a black woman in the workplace. In that, she talked about the misunderstanding and misinterpretation of equalities and real life scenarios within the law. She experienced um, a civil rights movement that wanted her womanhood to be secondary and a feminist movement that wanted her um, race to be secondary. When actual fact, we are not one of these things. So as a Muslim woman of colour with migrant parents walking through services, policy that's designed, programmes, academic research, I don't get to opt which one of these I'm going to be whilst I engage. I am all of these things and the interpretation of all of these things by those who are engaging with me. If there's one thing that you take away from this, it's to understand that without intersection analysis, marginalised women in particular who experience multiple systemic inequalities are continuously failed by policy making. If we do not take an intersectional approach, we will create policy making that only delivers for those who are already accessing some kind of privilege in opportunity, power or rights. Diversity in a room does not necessarily produce an intersectional analysis. There is a reach and a run before you can walk idea of intersectionality being embedded into policy practice. Want to run before you can walk means that we are assuming intersectional analysis and calling something an intersectional analysis when it isn't so. For you to consider and just reflection on. I want you to consider a research project, a policy review, an article you've worked on in the last two years. And I want you to ask yourself if you were to go back and redesign it with a more competent intersectional analysis, analysis of at least two intersecting systemic questions. What would it now include and what would it improve about it? This is a really good exercise to do before you start the next task. Always asking, is disaggregated data available? If not, why not? And how have you bothered highlighting this in the work that we've done? How have those with the lived experience of the intersecting inequalities been resourced and supported to develop co producer for design this work? I'm a real believer in um, academic work linking in and partnering with communities as opposed to researching them but doing it with them rather than to them. And what I will say about that is often I ask people, is the work that you're doing um, going to be taking into account marginalised women? And when they say, oh it's not about that, then they have to, you have to acknowledge that what you're doing 
is maintaining the status quo of systemic inequality. And you have to accept that. And you have to be honest about that in what it is that you write about. Because it's not that it's not doing anything. It's either enabling or disabling systemic inequality. And you have a choice to make there in what it is you produce. Big caveat, I'm talking about this. I'm often angry about it and I'm telling people off about it, but that doesn't mean that I have the perfect solution to it. I too am learning and improving and trying to make myself as better as possible on this because this should be an iterative process for all of us. We cannot understand what and how young women learn, experience and respond to violence without recognising the determining uh, context, particularly of age and place, and how these intersect with gender. We have created a hierarchy of violence whereby the harms experienced by young women post conflict have been silenced by omission and lack of recognition. within a, any uh, section of the workplace could be racialized on the basis of language used at the intersections of power, status, race, language, and gender. At the core of my academic identity sits my bilingual and multicultural self. If we can become proficient in, in, in different ways of writing and talking and being, in a very dynamic and fluid uh, organic way, then, then actually we can get published. Not only that, but we can also own our own unstandardized or non-standard uh, ways of talking and, and, and writing as well. 